Well, the Bloemfontein Magistrates Court is today hearing Dr. Nandeep Amagutamana's bail application. The National Prosecuting Authority says the application has been staked down for two days. Magutamana is one of 12 people accused of aiding convicted rapist and murderer Tabo Besta to escape from Mangaon Correctional Centre in the Free State in May of last year. Magutamana abandoned a bail application in May this year. This was to pursue an application in the High Court to have a arrest in Tanzania declared unlawful. The application was dismissed by the High Court after it uh, found that she had consented to being brought back to South Africa. Let's take you live to those proceedings. Also dated the 20th of May 2022, was served on the respondent's legal representatives. According to this order, the matter was postponed to 24 May 2022 and that the body must be released to the Hillbrown Mortuary before 22 May 2022. Both these orders were relating to the same case. In brackets, case number 27479 of 2022. 5.20. The second order, which is prima facie false, and involving the same legal firm of Vuyo Manisi is currently under criminal investigation. 5.21 In March 2023, there was a media article about the applicant and accused five shopping together at a mall in Gauteng. 5.22 Upon further investigations, I established that the applicant claimed and buried another unidentified body, which she claimed to be that of Temban Dovu, a brother to accused nine. The funeral was held at the same place and time as the first funeral. Upon digging the grave, Yoship, I see. It's written graze. It must be grave. Upon digging the grave to exhume the, the remains, we discovered ten times, three times ten kg bags of millimil were in the coffin with no human remains. It was established by means of fingerprints and DNA that the charred body found in cell 35 was that of Katleko Bereng. 5.24 My investigation revealed that accused one was promised 7 million rands to orchestrate the escape. He enlisted the assistance of his co-accused, that being accused 3, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11 and 12. It was later discovered that applicant made payments of 85,000 rands to accused one. 5.25 On 7 April 2023, the applicant accused five and the Mozambican nation, national were spotted and arrested by Tanzanian authorities in Arusha, Tanzania on transit to Kenya. On 12 April 2023, the Tanzanian authorities issued the applicant and accused five with a notice that they were prohibited immigrants in terms of their immigration laws. They were ordered to leave Tanzania within three days by escort. The applicant and accused five were arrested on 13 April 2023 on landing at Lenza Lenzaria Airport from Tanzania. 5.26 The applicant lodged an urgent application to the Free State High Court where I am cited as respondent number three, praying that the court declare her apprehension, arrest and abduction and subsequent transportation to the Republic of South Africa to be wrongful and unlawful. To declare her arraignment before the current magistrate's court be nullified and set aside the criminal proceedings against her. To direct orders and warrants by magistrates to detain her at Biza Mahatu 
null and void and, de and to declare her to be discharged from detention. This application was dismissed with costs. The costs involved are estimated at 600,000 rands. The application for leave to appeal was also dismissed with costs. A petition to the Supreme Court of Appeal, SCA, was filed on 17 August 2023 and is still pending. Paragraph 6. The applicant is, is applying for bail. I believe this application falls within Schedule 5 of Act 51 of 1977. Paragraph 7. This application for bail is opposed for the following reasons. 7.1 Section 60, subsection 4B of Act 51 of 1977. That is, there is a likelihood that the accused, if she is released on bail, will attempt to evade her trial. A. The merits and back background provided in paragraph 5 speaks for themselves. B. When charging the applicant on 14 April 2023, she provided me with the address S22A Second Road, Hyde Park, Santin, Johannesburg. C. Upon my investigation to confirm this address, I obtained a statement from Fortune Property Smith, an estate agent that leased out this property to the applicant. He stated that around 2018, the applicant rented one of their properties at number 12, Aston Street, Santon. When the rental period came to an end, the applicant approached him to lease the house in question, that is, 22A Second Road, Hyde Park, Santon. <coughs> he states that when she came to view this property, and at all times negotiation, a person who identified himself as Tom Katleho Mutsipe Nguana will join them on a video. This person will comment and make suggestions on specifications for renovations. D. The applicant later proposed to move her business to this property and started renovations on the one side of the property. At some stage, the applicant started falling behind with rentals and sometimes in August 2022, he met face to face with Tom Katler Homotze Pengwana together with the applicant and they proposed to him to use the place for events. E. On 21 March 2023, the, the applicant and the said Thomas Katejo Motsepe Nguana removed their belongings from this property and that was the last time that they were seen on this property. <clears throat> this was the same period that the media covered their public appearance. I obtained the lease agreement and discovered that the lease agreement was signed on 15 January 2021 and was valid until 14 January 2023 and that the signatories were the applicant and TK Nguana. I later discovered that the said Tom Katleho Motsepe Nguana is one of the alias names used by accused five. F. The above mentioned estate agency further revealed that the applicant had also rented another property at 64A Colini Drive River Club for use and occupation by her parents. On 24 March 2023, the applicant instructed the parents to urgently and immediately vacate the property. Again, this was the same time that the media exposed them. Thus, when providing me with this address on 14 April 2023, the applicant knew she was no longer staying at this address as 
the contract expired in January 2023 and had unceremoniously vacated the property on 21 March 2023. She thus provided me with false information and deliberately misled me. G. The applicant qualified and practiced as a medical doctor. During the course of my investigations, I obtained an affidavit from the Health Profession Councils of South Africa on 14 April 2023. Amongst others, it is declared that the applicant was registered with the council in the category of public service community service with effect from 1st January 2016 until February 2017 when she was registered in the category independent practice medical practitioner. However, the applicant was suspended on the 1st of December 2021 for failure to pay the prescribed fees. Therefore, at the time of arrest, she was no longer permitted by law to practice as a medical doctor. The address where her practice was situated is 3 Lower Road, Green Park, Morningside, Sandton, Johannesburg. During my investigation at CIPC, that is Companies and Intellectual Property Commission, I established that the medical center is registered with a different address, that of 35B Townsend Road, Bedford View, Johannesburg. It is registered as a private company under the name Optimum Medical Holding Group, PTY LTD. H. My investigation at CIPC further revealed that the applicant's name features in the following companies. Firstly, TBM Pty Ltd. She is registered as a director with three other shareholders. The regist registered address is 219 Broadcrest Country Estate, Gauteng. 2. SACO S -A -C -O, Investment and Capital Fund Pty Limited. She is registered as a director but it appears she has since resigned. The registered address is 22 George Avenue, Rivonia, Extension 1, Santon. 3. Doctors Network Legacy, Pty Ltd, where she is registered as a director. The re registered address is 35B Townsend, Bedford View. 4. One or I Medical Life Pty Ltd, where she is registered as a director. Registered address is Ground Floor Green Park Corner, Santon. I Coin Group Pty Limited, where she is registered as well as a director, with a registered address as Ground Floor Green Park Santon. Then the other companies are room holdings pty limited she's registered as a director with a registered address as 17 humpens bush willow park 87 greenstone drive on 8 august 2023 the high court Gauteng local division under case number 37069 2023 ordered this company to pay 2.8 million rand and 272,000 rands to the two applicants in that matter, that being Lloyd Marcus Teboho Maduani and Mapuleng Plantina Maduani. I, paragraph I, the applicant is married with two minor children that are school going. The two children are currently staying with the father. The applicant deserted the children 
since March 2023, she decided to elope with accused five while she was still a married woman. I have since established from correctional services that the applicant was never visited by her husband and children since her arrest and detention. It has also been established from the telephone re register that there was only one telephone call to the husband. Instead, the many telephone calls were to friends and her legal team. J. In terms of properties, there are no properties registered in her name at this office. I however established she owns three cars, that being a Porsche, Opel Corsa Utility, and Volkswagen. The Porsche in question was used in Bloemfontein during the so-called funerals mentioned above. The applicant, first accused number five from KwaZulu Natala, after the escape using this same forge, uh, Porsche, a tracker confirmed this movement. The applicant left this Porsche with her security when she fled the country. It is currently impounded in Northwest. Paragraph K. The applicant has a valid passport that was issued on 16 February 2017 and will expire in February 2027. It has been established from the Department of Home Affairs that since the issue, this passport was used 23 times for trips outside South Africa. At the time of arrest, she was in possession of two other passports belonging to somebody else. Statement of owner of these passports was obtained. She declares the applicant deceived her in handing her these two passports. Upon scrutiny of the passport of the applicant, it was established she did not use the passport when she fled the country. This was further confirmed by Home Affairs. This passport was only stamped on arrival at Lenzaria <laughs> Airport from Tanzania after her arrest. Pardon me for that. L. The applicant has everything to lose by remaining in the country. There are further criminal cases that have since been registered against her. These are the following. Sinoville case 206 of 4, 2023. It's a fraud matter where the amount involved is 15 million rands. Santon case 87 of 4, 2023. Fraud amounting to 500,000 rands. Runback case 269 of 2, 2023. Fraud amounting to 1.2 million rands. Benoni Cass 348 of 8, 2023, fraud amounting to 5.112 million. Thank you. My, my apology. Deben North Cass 1 of 7, 2023, fraud amounting to 150,000 rents. Runback Cass 269 of 3, 2023, Fraud amounting to 900,000 rents. Paragraph M. The applicant is not only facing long term of imprisonment if she is convicted on the above mentioned matters, but is also facing further civil claims. The applicant is facing a long term imprisonment regarding this matter. As previously stated, the applicant left the country illegally and was traced in Tanzania. South Africa does not have an extradition treaty with Tanzania. Extradition is nonetheless a long and protracted process. 
In the matter of State versus Diwani, his wife was killed while on honeymoon in November 2010. He was only extradited in April 2014. Paragraph M. The applicant is facing serious charges. The state has an overwhelming case against the applicant as, and is linked to the crimes as follows. Count one, fraud. There's direct evidence, eyewitnesses who confirm that the applicant claimed the body and arranged for a fake funeral. Count two, violation of a body. The very same body that the applicant claimed was recovered in the river and in the grave was rotten meat and not a body. Count three, the contravention of section 3B of Act 12 of 2004, that is corruption. The applicant and a co-accused acted in the furtherance of a common purpose. Their aim was that Bester must escape. The objective evidence of bank statements shows that the applicant was also on occasions a source who provided the money to accused one for distribution to their co-accused. So far, it has been established the applicant paid 85,000 rand to accused number one. Count four, the contravention of section 31A of Act 12 of 2007, should be four, corruption. See the summary provided regarding count three. Count five, fraud. Direct evidence and eyewitnesses who confirm that the and the accused nine claimed the then unidentified body. The objective evidence is that the applicant's fingerprints was on the claim form. It is required that the person who claims such a body must give his or her fingerprints. Count six, arson. To facilitate the escape of Bester, the unidentified body and Bester's cell were set alight. See also count eight to 12. Count seven. Violation of body. There are direct evidence, eyewitnesses, that the applicant arranged a fake funeral, that the applicant fraudulently claimed the body, count five, as that of Bester. When claiming this body, she also made a false statement to the police. The applicant introduced herself also as Dr. Nandipa when she claimed the body of Bester in Hajis. Count eight, assisting an inmate to escape. See the contents of the evidence, count seven. Count nine, contravention of section 115E of Act 111 of 1998, harboring and concealing an escaped prisoner. The applicant rented a house in Santon where she and Bester stayed. There is a lease agreement and files that were seized on this premises after the arrest. The applicant and Bester were seen by members of the public in each other's company. They also committed further fraud after the escape. There was even security to protect them at this house. Count 10, defeating the ends of justice. See the summary provided regarding count 5, 6, and 7. Count 11, fraud, direct evidence, eyewitnesses implicated the applicant. See the summary provided regarding count five, six, and seven. Bail condition would not prevent applicant to flee the country. She evaded the police for 11 months. She fled the country and did not use a passport when she left South Africa. She has no respect for the law and even tried to use the legal system to get hold of the body. She, she brought an application that the body, count five, must be released and that the police must be interdicted from harassing her. She stated that it is Bester's body and that she is his customary wife. She stated that she and Bester met whilst they were studying at Vets University. Bester studied theology. Whilst Bester was in custody, Bester obtained 
his LLB degree. She lied about the death of David Magagula. It has been established that the uncle to Tabo Bester is Klaas Magagula, who is the uncle to Accused Five, and who confirmed there was never a David Magagula. 8.3, section 60, subsection 4C of Act 51 of 1977, the likelihood that the applicant, if she is released on bail, will attempt to influence or intimidate witnesses or conceal or destroy evidence. Some of the witnesses are known to the applicant. The counts of corruption are an indication that she could influence witnesses. 8.4 section 64D of Act 51 of 1977, the likelihood that the applicant, if released on bail, will undermine or jeopardize the criminal justice system, including the bail system. A, the applicant, knowing that the information is false, brought a false application for the release of the body. B, the applicant, knowing that it is false, alleged in the High Court of Bloemfontein, that she was kidnapped from Tanzania. 8.5, section 64E of Act 51 of 1977, the exceptional circumstances that the public peace or security or likelihood that the release of the applicant will disturb the public order or undermine the justice system. A, the nature of these offenses induced a sense of shock to the community. It was well-planned operation. A convicted rapist and murderer was back in the community. D. There was a total disrespect towards the dignity of the two bodies that they claimed. The second body, Katleho Bering's family, was heard and still has more questions than answers. E. These crimes jeopardized the public confidence in the criminal justice system. The persons who were to ensure that a dangerous person, Bester, was locked up, was put back on the streets because of corruption. F. Corruption is a huge problem in our country and hardly a day went by when the enormous proportion of corruption is not in the media. G. The applicant has no respect for the justice system, as previously mentioned. H. As a result of these crimes that were committed, a parliamentary committee investigated these crimes. Paragraph 9. There is a substantial incentive for the applicant to evade a trial. 10. I have had the opportunity to scrutinize the affidavit by the applicant and wish to state the following. 10.1 at paragraph 7.1.5 of the affidavit. I also scrutinized the supplementary statement by one Natai Michelle Chibaya. I have since established that Natai Michelle Chibaya is a Zimbabwean citizen who obtained permanent residence in the Republic of South Africa only in July 2018. Her residential address on the system of the Department of Home Affairs is 31 Quella Close, 16 Maven Avenue, Dallas Vale, Johannesburg. The fact that this person has been staying in this address only from January 2022 is concerning. I wish to state further that accused nine is a Zimbabwean who was employed by the applicant first as a gardener and later, later promoted to a security guard. A black Mercedes Benz, which was rented by the applicant, which she never returned and which was later found abandoned in Zimbabwe when she was still at large. This is evident that the applicant has close ties with Zimbabwe. Her friendship with this person she states she will stay with is concerning. 10.2 at paragraph 7.4 of her affidavit. 
She stays amongst others. She was practicing as a <coughs> medical doctor until her arrest. As stated above at 7.1G, the applicant was suspended from practicing as a medical uh, doctor in December 2021. If she had been practicing as she alleged, this was unlawful. Paragraph 10.3 At paragraph 8.2, I categorically dispute this allegation. And this was the allegation that she was sort of kidnapped, put in a car, and she found herself in Tanzania. Through thorough investigation, I have established that the applicant was the one who drove from Johannesburg to fetch accused five from KwaZulu Natala after his escape. As stated at paragraph 7.1e above, the applicant and accused five rented out a house together. They are both signatories to the lease agreement. My apologies. The two, that being applicant and accused five, were spotted shopping together by the media in March 2023. The applicant and accused five traveled together and stayed in Cape Town where, amongst others, the applicant wrote out a prescription for accused five and visited a salon together. Looking at how the applicant is involved and the role she played in the escape of accused five as outlined above, there is no piece of evidence that she was at any stage forced and or threatened in any manner. Prior to the escape of accused five, the applicant stayed in one of the boutique hotels in Bloemfontein in March 2022 and April 2022 in what looks like facilitation of the escape. The applicant is currently detained in Kronstadt while accused five is detained in Pretoria. Since her arrest, no case was opened of kidnapping. The applicant and accused five has been appearing before this court on more than one occasion. They appear showing there is affection to each other. They were seen holding hands and smiling to each other. See example a picture of them during the last appearance on 8 August 2023 attached as Annexure B. Paragraph 10.4 At paragraph 8.3, 8.4, 8.5, 8.6, 8.7, and 8.8 As appears from 10.3 above, the applicant had been freely moving around in KZN, Gauteng, and the Western Cape. There is a border post between South Africa, Zimbabwe, and Zambia to reach Tanzania. The applicant had example, had ample time to alert any of the authorities about the so-called forced removal. The estimated distance between South Africa and Tanzania is 3,400 kilometers. This is all I can declare. And it is commissioned, Your Ship, and signed at Bloemfontein today, the 29th of August, 2023. I wish to submit it as Exhibit H. J. J. As a basis. And that is my case. Thank you. Well, your ship, I'm looking at time now. It's uh, 10 to 4. We definitely have to address you course before you give your ruling on the matter in the light of time and the 
the volume of aspects which we need to address you on in relation to this bail application and the matter for the actually set down for two days i would propose that we run it over until tomorrow for both the applicant and the state to address you before just that's a please <coughs> that that would have be my request as well, Your Ship. I want to further propose that we, considering it's almost <laughs> after our work, uh, that we make it to what time? Eh? Advocate Lamine, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock? Well, uh, the matter resumes tomorrow. Um, Dr. Nandipa Magutumana's bail application underway at the Bloemfontein Magistrates Court that um, set for the next two days. As we heard, the NPA opposing bail for Dr. Nandipa at this stage. Um, we do understand that they're looking at the factors um, crucial to, to the evidence at hand. This, this bail application comes four months after her arrest for helping Tabu Besta escape. Um, we're obviously going to see the uh, announced uh, the, uh, the uh, judgment um, tomorrow.